welcome back everyone to another Steel Division 44 replaycast. And this time we will have a, as you can see, 3v3. The map is Point Du Hawk. And it is going to be between 9th Panzer, 116th Panzer, and 12th SS Panzer versus 3rd Infantry, 101st Airborne, and 4th Armored. So players are going to be very obese. Hmm. I wonder if you will uh, get a lot of short rolls because they're very obese as well. Icar 15 and Starkiller 66. On the opposing side, we're going to have, of course, Brother Pedro, Tong Yo Yo, and Taromi 4021. So let's check this out. Now, already I see a big tank, a M18 Hellcat, coming in, of course, 4th Armored Division, Starkiller. A couple of armored jeeps with recon, of course, bazookas and uh, recovery scouts. Oh, by the way, this is indeed close combat. As you can see, the new mode where you can spawn in infantry without vehicles and you spawn in very close to each other. As you can see, already at the start, that did not go too well for the M18 Hellcat, getting instantly destroyed by the Martyr Free from Butter Pedro. Of course, the 9th Panzer does have a few tools that can uh, deal with pretty much anything at the Allies' disposal, especially at these kinds of medium to close ranges. I gotta be very careful, especially with the Panzer II Lukes. So the Panzer II looks is going to be a little bit of a um, terror over here for these riflemen as they take a lot, a lot of fire from the get-go. As you can see, that big, big KWK-38 gun will just start to pound on both the half-tracks and the riflemen. In the meantime, in the center, we have a very, very infantry-heavy build from the 12th SS Panzer player. Wait, no, that's actually the Windhund player. So uh, interestingly enough, not using a lot of the light vehicles that um, I might have expected. I mean, we have a Panzer III M and a, um, of course, Spewagen command vehicle, but overall he's going to be in a little bit of trouble versus the Airborne if the Airborne can use their AT guns correctly. We also have a pack howitzer over here with 75mm rounds, plopping down on German infantry and forcing them away from these woods into some more friendly uh, locations. And so while the Germans are doing quite well on the right, and being pinned down in the center, it looks like on the left side that we completely actually pushed back. Of course, this is the uh, territory of the 12th SS Panzer, so they're going to be in a very, very, very weak position right at the start. They do have the Boita Firefly, which can work greatly in the favor of the Germans if they can take out the Allied tanks. But as you can see right now, we only have a Ram 2 coming from the Canadians and when it comes to vehicles. Otherwise, of course, this is close combat, so a lot of infantry is possible, and a lot of infantry is what Variabees went for, using a lot of these Vickers like machine guns, uh, putting them in key locations, as you can see in these buildings, and this isolated farmhouse, and then another one in another building, uh, putting them all up in these very key locations. As you can see, they share all a bit of a similarity in that they're in the middle of a, um, I guess you could say, an opening. So they have these big arcs of fire that they can use to suppress any German infantry, and so they've been able to push back the Germans. Getting a big uh, head, sort of bird's eye view, we can see that the center is really where um, the Germans are in the worst spot, however, because they're letting themselves get flanked by the airborne. Of course, at the start, the airborne are going to have some good, um, some good things going for them. But um, sorry, I had to have to adjust the volume. But overall. It could be, uh, could also be said that the Germans are kind of digging in their own hole over here. I mean, they're just keeping their own forces in a very tight cluster instead of spreading them out and trying to at least contest some of these um, flanks. And what they're doing is that they're allowing the airborne a lot of free access to um, points. As you can see, the Allies are 51% of map control, uh, whereas, of course, the right side of the map is being completely swept aside by the Germans. Uh, despite all this advantage, because of this uh, dent of the Allied, uh, rather, sorry, the German lines, because of this dent, the Allies still have the advantage. That's not very good. Only right now, it seems like they're trying to do something. And in this case, it's a mortar half track. Of course, this is a great tool to take out the AT guns, possibly even the pack howitzer. But at this moment, it's a little bit too late as the airborne riflemen can just kind of charge up at the trenches and the uh, trees, just completely smashing up the MG. And then if they get into the tree line, they're going to be able to do a lot of damage also to the half-tracks with their bazookas. So overall, the sensor not going well at all for the Germans. They're going to have a Panzer 1C 
course, recon tank with only machine guns. Coming in from Brother Pedro to try to at least halt this um, push for the Allies. On the left side, in the meantime, it looks like the Germans are trying to do a bit of a counterattack of a couple of Panzergrandiers. But as you can see, Riflemen plus Ram 2 are suppressing these units and forcing them away from, um, away from the center uh, of the trees and into the open fields beyond. However, they might actually fall back into the line of sight of these riflemen. Yep, they do, and they take a few shots parting away as a bit of a gift. And it seems like we have a Lloyd carrier, that's a, uh, what, that's a, yeah, six pounder. So six pounder gonna be carried across at the uh, extreme left turn, left turn, left flank, left hand side of the map, uh, just to cover this whole area against enemy vehicles, of course. Um, probably meant this one, the big boy to firefly. Uh, it seems like the German uh, sort of strategy on this side is just to hold as much as possible with a few Panzergrandiers, at least for now. Uh, they have gone for a boy to crumble too, however, uh, so this is a little bit more of an aggressive unit meant to take down enemy infantry units and especially good against AT guns because the range on this thing is 1,200 meters, whereas the range on the normal AT gun is, is going to be around 1,000 meters. So with good recon support, the boy to crumble can really help in pushing into this side and putting a dent into this dense formation of British, uh, or I guess Canadian units. Overall though, uh, with all the units that are on this side for Barry Beast, I am thinking that he's going to be able to um, keep himself in a uh, good shape at least. It's funny because he's very obese. But yeah, like he just needs to maintain his positions and keep his units reinforced up. I mean, if any of his uh, strongholds starts to take a lot of fire, he can just rush up more troops and then try to do a bit of a counterattack. He's facing such weak enemy forces that right now he's not going to have any problems. And right now, also the center is going to be going pretty well for the Allies. As you can see, two pack howitzers are just pounding away at the German positions in the area, just completely demolishing these half tracks and at least forcing them, um, forcing them to be pinned in their positions. Also, we have some damage coming in on the Panzer Free M. So clearly, um, we have the airborne being very, very aggressive. They're going to get. Um, yeah, they're going to get countered by a mortar half-track. The other mortar half-track, I have no idea what happened to it. Nope, it isn't one, any of these half-tracks. So, must have gotten destroyed by something, which is quite interesting. Now, we do have an airplane coming in. It's Spitfire from Very Obese. So, clearly, with his frontline secure, Very Obese is starting to think about the Air Force game. This could be very useful with the German strategy of, well, I guess you could say strategy of isolated pockets holding down. Uh, key positions. One good play, uh, well placed bomb can really take out one of these squads and put a big dent into the German positions. And of course, this also causes a couple of verbal vins to be purchased 90 uh, points apiece, so 180 points for the Germans, especially in phase B for the 12th SS, uh, is nothing to be laughed at in general. So, this isn't all that good. What is good for the uh, Axis side is that, of course, on the right side, Starkiller 66 has been defeated. So what this opens up is a lot of opportunities for Brother Pedro to just uh, kind of flank in towards the center, and especially exposing these big artillery in the rear, or not really big, but medium artillery pieces in the rear, uh, which could be a nice usage of these um, Panzer IIs. If they can come in and take down the AT guns and the pack howitzers, that's going to be a very, very nice boon. But at this point, as you can see, um, we do have some units being spawned in. It says Starkiller 66, but most likely it's just his allies uh, spawning in some units with the points he gave. I'm not sure uh, what kind of... Uh, well, it is still it is still 4th uh, AD units, but um, yeah, I have no idea. I have no idea overall. Still... Um, just kind of means that the right side is a non uh, non factor for the allies. In the meantime, the center, uh, the more half track is uh, hitting a whole bunch of nothing, so <laughs> not a lot of things going for them. However, a locust goes down, so good job from the 80 half track actually, the SKFZ 205010 with the uh, I believe it's a yeah, pack 35. What kind of gun is this? 
37 millimeter. Really now. I've, yeah, I rarely see this unit. It's got, you know, 5 AP, so uh, even with the Locust, it had to have been, you know, a pretty lucky shot for it to destroy the Locust. At 600 ish meters, yeah, overall, overall could have gone a lot worse for the Allies. Now, um, yeah, there goes a Grasshopper. Um, ME109 starting to make their presence a little bit felt, and right now the Marauder. Uh, yeah, the Marauder can do a little bit of damage to the ME109 with its tail guns. I wonder what the Marauder bombed. Might have been a bombing run on the left. Yeah, had to have been. Looks like on the um, anti air, because they were all very, very much panicked. So I'm guessing that that was the target. And interestingly enough, the Boyta Cromwell still has been kept very much in the rear. Um, still out of range, I would say. Let's see. Actually, no, it isn't out of range. But still, it's in a pretty, as you can see, bad position for line of sight. If he were to just move up forward just a little tiny bit, he would have a much, much stronger... Yep, he does now. So he's moving up the Boyta Cromwell. He can use the... Um, he can use the big HE on it. And it's a little bit too late though, because the Sherman Firefly went down to the uh, six pounder. So the six pounder now is also going to be rushing towards these woods as quickly as possible to avoid that fire. Uh, definitely does not want to get himself killed. And a Panzer II Luke's, <laughs> he's chasing down those jeeps. It's a little bit like in a movie. So right now he's gonna do a bit of a great chase of these two jeeps with bazooka troops. And uh, that might actually lead to a cutoff of this entire pocket of airborne. And it's like, yeah, maybe maybe they're all meant to be surrounded, but they'd rather not be. Still, of course, it is the Airborne, so they're not going to have as bad of a penalty. But exactly as I fought, Panzer II Luke's spots all of, the, um, all of the artillery, or rather, is signaled by Tong Yo Yo. There's a lot of artillery, and right now, ooh, what is there? What is there all there? He still needs to turn this corner, and then he is going to be able to see everything there. Of course, there's a 37mm AT gun. But that can't fire because of these trees. So, of course, sneaky, sneaky Panzer II gonna get behind the allies. The Bofors could try to destroy it. In fact, I would think that the Bofors would be able to destroy it. The problem is... Oh, it's actually turned in the right direction. It's still not uh, in the line of sight, though. So, the Panzer II is gonna be able to just demolish these airborne howitzers. Destroy the jeep supply vehicle even, if it wanted, and in general just cause a huge hassle for the allies. So very, very well played by Brother Pedro, getting that unit in exactly when it needed to be, and it also manages to destroy the Wolvers with only one shot. So of course, that not only um, provides a um, relief to the German troops uh, that are kind of encamped up here and have been besieged in this area for about the last 27 minutes pretty much, actually 15 minutes, it also provides a little bit of a uh, intel bonus to the Germans. They know that in this area, it's pretty much all clear. So they bring in more Panzer II Luxes and um, Panzer one Cs. And of course, they meet a couple of Jeeps that were transporting AT guns up the front and completely bushwhack them into the nothingness. And that is not going to be good for the anti-tank defenses of um, Ice Icar 15, right? The airborne player. Uh, now he's basically without AT guns. He's got... Well, he doesn't even have that. He used to have an AT gun there. He's got a couple of bazookas scattered around. But if the um, if the Windhund player can just kind of put a tank here, he can close this pocket. And um, that would not only, of course, provide some good bonuses versus the units in this pocket, it would also uh, very much provide a lot of uh, territory to the Axis. Of course, thanks to this nice push, the Axis does have a 62% lead over the Allies. So despite the fact that early on they were on the back foot, the Germans are now, as you can see, recovering up to 350 points. And they're now very, very much in an uh, advantageous position. However, um, on the right side it seems like we have some units trying to make a bit of a counter-offensive versus, um, versus Brother Pedro. But it's not really working out because he does have some good defenses set up. As you can see, very nice Panzer Trex, very nice infantry, of course, uh, recon just to spot in what is going to be coming in, and a couple of martyrs in the rear, at least one, which was the original one. No, only the original one. Okay, so still a martyr in the rear to help with the anti-tank, and a couple of Lukes are available 
for his defense, also providing uh, support to his infantry with the command vehicles. Overall, this right side is very well defended. The only kind of weak point is this little strip where the Martyr is located. If the Allies were able to get a nice push going over here, they would definitely cut off all these tanks. But I feel like this is not going to happen because the Allies are going to have to focus a little bit on destroying these before going and doing anything else. So of course the 101st Airborne Player does have his DB Sherman PR uh, in Phase B, but um, soon enough we're going to start to see a lot of heavier German tanks as well, which is not going to be all that good for that Sherman, definitely not. However, things are going much much better for the Allies when it comes to the air war. Uh, I mean, they are still losing recon planes like a plague, but they're still able to uh, maintain fighter and most likely bomber superior. I haven't seen any German bombers in a long, long time. Whereas the Allies are uh, putting in a lot of sorties and getting some good strikes off on German troops. So now we start to see si finally some German mediums hit the field. Panzer IV, Verbalvens, and of course on the right side, uh, we also have Brother Pedro's Panzer IV-J from, of course, 9th Panzer Division. That is not a weak unit at all, despite the fact that its turret is, of course, kind of slow to turn. But at this point, we have Vario Beast surrendering, and I would guess that this uh, isn't going to be all that good for the Allies, especially as Vario Beast was the only one kind of holding his front and, um, yeah, really able to check his opponent. But since now his stuff is controlled most likely by the AI. It's not going to go all that well for him. As you can see, um, we have a few units already being pushed away. The Axis have been um, building up in this area. We have, they have a Tiger E, of course, the uh, Ace from Wittmann. And they have a Panzer IV-H command vehicle coming in. So they're going to have a very, very prudent little uh, couple of vehicles to help spearhead the push. Not only that, of course, the opponent's... Uh, well, I guess you could say quits in probably the worst possible moon because again the Germans had been building up and right now we have been seeing the results of that build up and they're now ready to strike and I feel like um, this guy Terumi right Terumi would have attacked regardless of whether or not his opponent left however as you can see very obese had a lot of uh, points saved up so tons of units being spawned instantly uh, never save up points they're always useful if you save up points, it's like you're not using them. However, at least the Allies were able to open up a corridor back to their front lines, but not before a lot of these units actually went down to the mortars. And it seems like um, the corridor isn't really all that safe. They might just get uh, might just get reclosed soon enough. However, the Panzer II Lukes really isn't going to be able to do anything against the Sherman. As you can see, the M4DD just does not really care too much about the 30 millimeter rounds hitting its frontal armor and easily just squats that panther two away of course there's still the problem of uh, more access reinforcements going to be coming through the road once these units fall so it's kind of imperative that these guys resist for as much as possible however on the right side we have a big push coming in from the allies in a very very blobby fashion with a couple of hellcats stewards and then tons and tons of infantry coming in throughout the um, sort of same area so as soon as some german artillery can spot this position and target it, it's not going to go that well for them. However, there is a Marauder coming in, so of course this Marauder... Actually, this one isn't a bomber, right? It is the... Um, it's just like the... I guess you could say support... Uh, support little... It's, it's not even what I would call a gunship, but yeah, pretty much. It's not really doing anything. <laughs> it's just kind of circling around, doesn't have anything to shoot at. And I don't really see any German aircraft either, no, so nothing for it to fight. He's very, very sad, cruising through the stack sky, not really doing anything. Oh well, he's so lonely. <laughs> yeah, Germans pulling in more tanks, of course, Brother Pedro's Panzer IV Js. They were, these are definitely going to be nice. Spam the numbers with only 125 points per piece, these are going to be a little bit of a problem for the allies. As you can see, the first one already is fighting in the right side, and it's already managed to take out the Hellcat, it looks like, and the uh, Stuart. Although, most likely help in that by the Martyr Free. So yeah, I don't really see how the allies could turn us around with two players 
left, but they can definitely try. I mean, the only one that's left right now is Icar. And Icar has been, uh, of course, hit very, very hard by that surround of his forces in the uh, central area of the map, but he's still not giving up. He's bringing in the planes, he's bringing in some M4DD Shermans. But um, he needs to stabilize his front line and then somehow get a pushing force together as the 101st Airborne. So um, as we approach phase C, this is going to be increasingly difficult, if not impossible, for him. He's going to have to rely on his allies doing some very good work. And right now, it seems like actually the AI on the left isn't doing all that bad. Um, of course, the uh, Tiger Vitment is still around and the Befez Panzer IV is also uh, providing nice bit of, uh, you know, command bonus to the Germans, but at least the um, at least the Allies do have some troops coming into the trees. They're going to be able to at least slow down the Germans. Uh, they are coming in with a very strong push of half-tracks and infantry, and of course, with that tank support, but as you can see, there's some British artillery coming in from the Ram 2 OP. So overall, it could be much worse for the Brits on the left side, where it is going all that... Uh, you know, badly is the right side with the 4th Armored. Another Stuart goes down to the anti-tank guns of the 9th Panzer, I'm guessing. Yep, 50mm Pack 38, getting an excellent shot. As you can see, it was just in the corridor that um, was exposed to the enemy fire, and it's also pretty much in the 1000, just tinily in the 800m range, yeah, pretty much. So with the Pack 38's um, penetration not being exactly the best, uh, being around 800 meters very much is safer than at 1,000. However, um, yeah, the, the AI is doing quite decently bringing out units, but nothing too great. Nothing too great yet. And the Germans are still relentlessly charging into the center. Uh, they do have a Möbelwagen, so more AA, and a lot of artillery, but not a lot of pushing units coming in from Tengyu, Tengyoyo. Uh, he would need to really be focusing on getting out some um, tanks, if you like, even just medium armor. Needs something that can push into these, this kind of empty nothing that is the allied center. Right now he does have at least a light bomber coming in. If they, uh, of course, Foco 490 can take out all the infantry. But still, it isn't enough. He needs something that can push in and push in hard. Right now he does not have that. Uh, only Brother Pedro really has this with the Panzer IVs on his side, but they take a huge bombing run and are forced to retreat. This is going to definitely delay the Germans on that uh, right flank. Meantime, left side is going okay for the Germans, but it isn't going as well as they hoped. So they're encountering some pretty stiff allied resistance in the Bocage, and uh, thanks to the fact that the Tiger is um, a little bit in a, uh, I guess you could say secure, but perhaps too secure position, it really can't fire at anything. So the support of this like 200 and what 40 point unit is really being sorely 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 felt or rather the need for the support is being sorely felt they need to bring this vehicle in and let it do its best otherwise it's gonna be a lot of points wasted and it's the last thing that uh, at least Terumi wants so overall uh, it seems like yeah, the Staghound AA isn't going to be able to withstand the Allied pressure for a sorry, the Axis pressure for a while. But nice time on target coming to come in, of course, from uh, that um, Ram 2 OP. One more artillery salvo is going to be available to it. Let's see how the AI uses it. Definitely, so far, it's been using that um, artillery quite well to stop the German push, but it hasn't been enough. As you can see, the Germans are 150, 150, 1500 points. And the allies are still down to zero, and with two players missing, I would still say that they do not really have a chance. If I was um, if I was Icar, what I would try to do is just continue to fortify up the center, which is what he's doing. I really do not know what else he could try. I mean, he's definitely focused on a little bit on uh, the planes, obviously being the 101st Airborne. That does make a lot of sense, but he's not going to really have the ground forces to actually push in the boots on the ground to capture territory and hold that, which is what he needs right now. Uh, however, his opponent really is helping him by bringing out units like this Jagdpanzer IV and the Möbelwagens constantly. Um, not exactly pushing units either. They're not going to be able to really uh, carve a bit of a path through the center. 
and that's kind of what the Germans need to do at this point. They need to push on, keep the pressure up, and uh, sort of continue with their momentum that they have accrued. However, it just seems like um, you're going to let Brother Pedro do all the work. I don't know. He does have a lot of forces on the right side. Uh, he's got a couple of Panzer IVs in the center. Of course, the ones that were building up throughout this, um, throughout these few minutes. And that earlier on took that big bombing run. Now they're able to push in. However, they're pushing into a potentially very dangerous area with bazookas and uh, airborne units kind of hiding around everywhere. And the bazooka is going to be firing. Fires at the SDKFZ uh, armored car, which is very lucky for these Panzer IVs because it misses and it reveals its own positions. But one of the Panzer IVs does go down to the uh, very accurate fire of that bazooka somehow. Uh, Bazooka is also going to be retreating back into the trees and uh, sort of survive to fight another day and to come at... Oh, but there's the Spätrup. Spätrup, however, fails to destroy the Bazooka. So the Bazooka is able to get back into the trees. So overall, very nice work with these isolated units defending the center, but it isn't going to be enough, especially if the German vehicles start to be get very, very aggressive. And it looks like what they're trying to do is they're trying to um, provide support for an assault into the uh, juncture between the left and middle for the Allies. I'm not sure why Bird Pedro is bringing in his vehicles so drastically to help his Allies, but uh, he's going to also force in a bombing run. So not the worst possible outcome for the Germans. They're forcing out the Allied Air Force to um, waste their time into the center while the right is kind of just sitting without any um, without any major forces defending it from the Germans, but not really being bothered either by the Allies. So here comes a big strafing run on the Panzer Strikes, but not really going to be able to do anything. And the Flak 37, uh, Flak 36, 37 millimeters can now uh, push back that Marauder. And in fact, it's going to go down to all the ME109s. No, what are the ME109s doing? I feel like it could destroy the Marauder, but they're going to let it escape and instead go after the fighters. Fighters have been fighting the ME109, but at this point, they've fought a little bit too long and now will be destroyed. Yep, two fighters going down for the Allies. Definitely not the best day for those pilots, but yeah, it was to be expected if they uh, just kind of charged into free enemy aircraft and then uh, retreated back to base. Yeah, it was pretty much obvious what was going to happen. And at this point, uh, yeah, the left side is still kind of a stalemate. Uh, the Axis have gained a little bit of territory, as you can see, they've gained this kind of square of um, square of crops. But overall, not a lot of progress considering the amount of resources that are actually putting into this side. Of course, they have the big tanks, they have tons of Panzergrandiers, tons of half tracks coming in, and of course, the aircraft supporting them throughout. So, not really the best outcome. For the Germans, considering what they had at their disposal, Tarumi could have uh, perhaps done a little bit more on his side. And especially the center really allowed the Allies to stay into this game a long time. Because despite Brother Pedro's excellent flanking maneuver in the south, Icar was able to hold this position for a much, much longer time than he should have been. Thus allowing, um, or rather forcing Brother Pedro to bring in units to fight over the center. So we have a couple of uh, big vetted up tigers coming in, of course, or actually, no, just one. One big vetted up tiger coming in, and that's a panther. So of course this is one of the two veteran tigers, and it's being supported by a command vehicle, so it goes vet free. That's going to be very, very strong, but at this point it really isn't all that needed anymore. The allies are pretty much gone. So I'm just going to kind of speed it up to the end. I don't think that the allies can do anything at this point. Uh, Icar did try with the aircraft, but now he has lost them, and he did try fortifying up his position, but at this point, as you can see, by just sheer weight of numbers, the Germans have been able to just crush that. And so because of that, at this point, I feel like the Allies are pretty much down for the count. Uh, as I said, despite the fact that one of their players lost in the beginning, I still felt like the Allies had a bit of a chance all throughout the mid-game. But hey, it was not meant to be, so I want to thank you all for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this other Steel Division 4 to 4 rebroadcast. And as always, if you enjoyed, drop a like. If you didn't enjoy for some reason, drop a dislike. Feel free. Any comment helps. I'll see you soon. Peace.